All right, welcome back. And next we're going to be talking about working with filters. And whenever you have a photograph or some type of image, um, you can add a number of different, what I call, artistic effects uh, to that particular image. And when you are working with fil if filters, you want to, and if you want to work with all the filters available, uh, you want to make sure that uh, your image uh, is what we call uh, RGB mode. And right now, this particular image is in CMYK. But if I want to change that, what I would, what I would do is go up to the, up the menu bar under image and with you get the drop down menu and we click on go down to mode and do the side menu. And you can see there we can change this to grayscale, RGB, CMYK, etc. Uh, but in this case, we want to change it to, to RGB. And whenever you're changing mode, it will Photoshop will ask you if you want to flatten your image. I always say don't flatten. Uh, you want to make sure you have all your all your layers available that you want to work on. So I'll click on Don't Flatten. And so here we have uh, our image in RGB mode. And again, we have a whole host of artistic effect that we can apply uh, to an image uh, if we need to. And so if I, I have my image in RGB, I go to Filter. And if we, and we have, again, a, a number of of filters available. We have artistic uh, things. You can see on the side menu there we have different, a lot of different effects you can use there. You can blur your image if you need to. You have uh, different brush stroke effects that you can apply. Uh, if you want to distort your image in some way, you can have a lot of uh, choices there. If you want to have what we call noise uh, to, your, to, your, to your image, you can do that here. You can uh, make your image more pixelated. Uh, a lot of effects there. We have render. Um, we have sharpen. You can sharpen your image. You can add uh, you can add sketch effects to this. So you, as you can see, there's a lot of different things that you have available to you. But let's say, for example, that you have an image and you want to make it look like a watercolor. So make sure that you have your again. Make sure you have the, uh, the layer selected that you'd be working on. In this case, I have just the as you can see from the little icon here. I have the uh, image <coughs> of the photo selected. So we go into filter. I go to artistic, and if we want to add a watercolor effect to this image, we'll click watercolor, and with that, we'll usually get this this um, watercolor dialog box that opens up that actually shows all the different uh, effects that you could potentially apply uh, to this photo. As you can see right now, it's on watercolor. If I want to give it a um, if I get a dry brush effect, I will click on that, and it will show the effect there in that window. And again, you can change back and forth in between these. If I want to add a fresco effect, if you find that useful to you, then you can select it there. If I want to use a colored pencil effect, that doesn't look that doesn't work too well in this particular image, but you can do that. You have film grain, you have fresco, you have paint daubs, um, poster edges gets a, a, a different look there. You can add a, a what they call a sponge effect to it. So you have a lot of different effects uh, in, in this case. And you can either say OK or you can just say cancel. And then you can come back out of that. Uh, but again, looking under the under the filter drop down menu, uh, you have again different different choices. If you needed to blur the image or a part of an image, uh, you just go to blur and it will blur it slightly, not too much. And I'm going to undo that. And I can go into a filter again to blur. If I go, I'm going to go to what's called uh, Gaussian blur. And this is one where you have more uh, control uh, over the blur affecting your image. And you may say, well, why do I want to blur my, my image? Well, there's some cases that you will want to do that, or, or a part of an image. And, and so you can see where you get this Gaussian blur uh, dialog box that comes up. And I can change the, the amount of blur just by moving that uh, moving that to the, to the left, to the right, and you may, there may be cases, you, you may have a, have a, a, a photo that requires blurring, and so you may just, you may just blur that just a tiny bit, or if you need to blur something a whole lot, obviously you can do that and make it totally, un, totally unrecognizable, but of course you don't want to do that. Again, just cancel that in this case. Uh, but going under filters, um, again, we have the, if you want to sharpen an image, this image already is fairly sharp, but if I say sharpen, and you can see it made that photo just a little bit sharper. So if you have a photo that's a little bit blurry, uh, and if you have a really blurry photo, not a whole lot's going to make it a whole lot better. But if you have a, a, a sharp, a fairly sharp image already, you can add a, 
Uh, if you want to make it a little bit sharper, then you can do that. I'm going to undo that effect. Uh, again, going back under under filter, you can do sketch effects. And let's see here. I'm going to say charcoal. And what's going to happen in this case? It's going to bring up another 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 window here showing uh, what that effect would look like. Here, back in this in this case, I've got a charcoal. I mean, it, it just they give drawing type effects to the image that you're working on. You've got that. You've got a chrome effect, which looks interesting. So you may find that you you find uh, things in here that will be useful to you in regards to your project. Here's one that says graphic pens. That really gives it an interesting uh, interesting effect. Uh, water water paper. You can make it look again more like a, a painterly effect in this case. Again, you can just cancel that. But what you, you know, what, and what you might consider doing is, uh, if you want to try out an effect, and let's say I'm going to take, I'm going to take layer one here, and I'm going to duplicate that layer. Remember, the way that we can do that is click that layer and bring it down to that layer palette, and we can create a a duplicate. And so sometimes I'll create a duplicate of layer to maybe work with that effect sometimes. So again. If I want to try a, a watercolor effect, again, I'm going to say, in this case, I'm going to say, okay. And uh, maybe you want to, maybe you want to have this image look uh, somewhat, somewhat like a uh, a watercolor, but and somewhat like the photo. And what you can do uh, in the layers palette, you have what's called uh, called opacity. And again, this is the, one of the great functionality features of the layers palette that you can control the opacity of the layer that you're working on. And so if I want to go down to, uh, say, 50%, I just take the slider here and move it down. And you see it begins that begins to merge into the photo, uh, the, the layer below it. But if I move that more to the right, it takes on more of that painterly effect. So if you wanted to merge those two layers just a little bit, you could do that. And you can just say, OK. And, and you can change that at any time. You're not locked into that. You can go back later and, and later and remove the the amount of uh, opacity that you're working on on that particular uh, on that particular image. So uh, that's a little bit more about working with filters and again work with the opacity. Uh, very very powerful features uh, in in Photoshop.